Well, greetings, viewers and voyeurs who have got that funk. What would it take for us in the USA to eradicate homophobia from our society? Uh, this question was prompted by a question I saw asked on Kazum Fowler's recent video. And um, when I read the question, the enormity of the task sort of dawned on me. I don't think I really gave it that much thought in the sense that the idea of eradicating it, of eliminating it completely, never really occurred to me. From my point of view, as long as uh, uh, LGBT people could enjoy 100% of the same equal rights uh, as everybody else in our society, we would have a victory. But I suppose equal rights isn't the, uh, isn't the end of the, the game. It's the middle of the game. The end of the game is putting an end to homophobia. Now, <clears throat> when I say eradicating or eliminating completely homophobia, uh, I want to qualify that by saying I know that for a fact we can never 100% get away from homophobia. There was always going to be some people, even if it's just a very tiny minority, even if we have 97% success of getting rid of homophobic attitudes in our society, we'll still have that 3% who will, for whatever reason, never ever be able to get past their homophobic attitude. So for one thing we need to be mature enough to understand that there will never be 100% success uh, but that doesn't mean that the effort shouldn't be made and that doesn't mean that uh, it's impossible either. But we are talking about a situation that will take many many decades to accomplish uh, well over a century I'm sure. And I say this because I think of the example as regards uh, African Americans. Institutional slavery was abolished in 1865 at the end of the Civil War, but abolishing slavery did not put an end to the oppression of blacks in our society, and it most certainly did not put an end to racist attitudes in our society. Not just racism against blacks, but racism against whites from blacks, and racism against every ethnic minority that we have in America uh, those problems of racism infect our society on every level and irrespective of slavery being legal or illegal those problems are always going to circulate uh, no matter how much effort we make to get rid of them there's always going to be some level of it because some people will never get past their baser instincts and uh, that's just the fact of the matter but regarding homophobia because homophobia is an attitude which is virtually irrational. There's no rational reason to discriminate against someone based on their sexuality. And um, I think one of the first steps, of many first steps that we need to take, is to get people to recognize that this fear is itself irrational. Um, now, I made a video almost five years ago called From Homophobia to Common Sense, where I talk about my own personal journey uh, from being a homophobic adolescent to being a mature young man who was accepting of gays and lesbians and transgender people. Um, and it was for me a long journey. It took a couple of decades and it was a journey that I wanted to make. How difficult will it be to get hundreds of millions of people to make this kind of a personal journey, kicking and screaming against their will? it's going to be difficult. It will take successive generations where every generation is a little bit more enlightened than their parents were. Um, and we need to recognize as well that there are different levels of homophobia. In my video below, um, linked below, um, I'm not going to reiterate all the points I made, but I will reference a few things. Um, I talk about my own personal journey being discarding one level of homophobia at a time. Now, I, see, I see homophobia as coming in different degrees and different levels and um, for me personally I had to peel off one before I could then work on the next one and so forth. For example, I think uh, when I was growing up in a, a, a boy in the 70s, um, I was about 12 when uh, boys started using the word gay or homo or, or faggot or queer as a pejorative against other boys and you adopt a homophobic attitude because you don't want to be tarred with that brush. Um, you might even adopt a homophobic attitude uh, ostensibly if you were gay as well just because you're still in the closet and you don't want to 
come out yet, so you adopt a homophobic stance. This is uh, social survival, um, depending on where you live and uh, your own strength of character and so forth. And um, so for me, I think I, I, I adopted a lot of homophobic uh, mentality from this idea that I didn't want people to think I was gay. I didn't necessarily see being gay as a bad thing. I just didn't want people to think I was gay because I thought it would, you know, sap my chances with meeting Miss Wright. Uh, that's the truth of the matter. And um, But upon that foundation, a lot of homophobic sort of stuff was built on. Also, in my own personal case, I think there's a level of homophobia which is innate, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But let's just talk about the, uh, the levels which are social constructs first. So there's this fear of being seen as gay when you're not. Um, that I think men in particular overcompensate for by being homophobic. There's also a level of homophobia where people who are relatively accepting of gays, lesbians, transgenders and whatever, in a sense that they will hold a conversation, be pleasant and polite, they won't discriminate against them in any way, fashion or form as far as they perceive themselves, but they will still say things like, oh, you know, I don't mind what they do in the privacy of their own home, I just don't want it rubbed in my face. Now, um, that's still a homophobic attitude. It, it may be uh, a little bit less toxic than um, being a complete anti-gay homophobe, but it's still homophobia. And we need to get rid of that attitude as well. Um, the people's intimate lives don't necessarily need to be uh, lived in full technicolor right in your face as such, but let's be honest, we're talking about open displays of affection here, like people holding hands or walking down the street with their arm around one another. Um, I don't think that there's any reason to object to seeing that uh, at all. Um, it's different when you see people, you know, making out, snogging each other's faces off or whatever, but I'm just as uncomfortable uh, in a shopping mall watching, walking past two teenagers, uh, heterosexual teenagers, uh, making out like they're in a hotel room when they're actually in a public place. Um, that makes me just as uncomfortable as it would do uh, to see two guys or two girls doing it. So. I think it's basically, you know, certain things uh, people have this sense of innate modesty about and they would prefer that people, things were kept in private. That being said, be honest about it. If you, if you don't mind seeing heterosexuals doing it in public, but you do mind seeing homosexuals do it, then you're homophobic still and you need to work on that. So there's that level of homophobia. There's also um, this level where, you know, a lot of religious homophobes do tend to think that there's something abnormal about homosexuals in particular. Now, let's be honest, homosexuality is a, min a minority sexual preference. To be completely homosexual is a minority sexual preference. And so it is abnormal in the statistical sense. But to my homophobic viewers who I know are out there, just because something is abnormal statistically does not mean that the people who behave in that activity are abnormal in character or in integrity. They've got just as much as you do. So, you know, you need to get past that because just because they behave differently to you, I mean, I'm sure there's things that you like that other people don't like, etc., etc. We all like different foods, different music, different colors. Uh, why we should have the same sexual preferences is a mystery when we have so many other tastes that are uh, subjective and we're okay with those. Um, so getting past that kind of attitude is, 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 is an important step as well. Um, I think there's an innate level of homophobia, which I'm going to discuss as well. And this is particularly pertaining to men, although it probably manifests itself differently for women. I don't know. I can't speak for women. But I know for me personally, I've got this irrational fear of anal sex. Okay, um, I've never engaged in anal sex with any of my female partners. I've never had anal sex with a man because I've never been had sex with a man. Um, but yeah, I've never had anal sex with any of my female partners. And uh, my previous girlfriend, who I broke up with in the summer, uh, she used to always tease me that she wanted to strap one on and, and uh, do me up the ass, right? And I was incredibly resistant to this. Now, don't get me wrong. When it comes to sex play, I'm usually open to virtually any idea. Uh, but for this idea, uh, you know, once if you once once for anything, twice if I like it, kind of thing. But for this idea, I wasn't even prepared to try it once. And uh, you know, she used to tease me, and say, "Oh, you're afraid you'd like it." And I can say for sure, no, I wasn't afraid I'd like it. I was I was afraid, yes, but not afraid that I'd like it. I was afraid because 
number one, uh, that thing's a piece of plastic that you just put on. You don't know what you're doing with it because you don't have any nerve endings there. You can't possibly know what it feels like, what you're doing. So how can you know what you're doing? You know, as simple as that. So there's that level. Plus there's this other level of like, I'm pretty sure it's going to hurt. And I, you know, I don't mind mixing up pain and sex necessarily, but not pain there. It's just, no thanks. It's just not something I'm interested in or curious about. And uh, last but not least, I was afraid I'd shit myself. And, uh, you know, that fear is pretty big, I have to admit. Uh, the idea of, of shitting myself in the middle of a sexual encounter is, is horrifying to me. So, yeah, uh, you know, the, I recognize these fears are irrational, though. But I think upon this irrational fear, it's very easy for people to pile on a whole bunch of social constructs which uh, confirm and justify this fear and make it seem less irrational. Um, you know, especially with all the social pressure there is, uh, you know, heterosexuality is to all intents and purposes promoted as the desirable normal status quo for normal people to be. And we need to get rid of this idea that there's such a thing as normal people. I think that would be a big step towards getting rid of homophobia. Uh, because, yes, the idea that people are either straight or gay is a little bit uh, undereducated, if you ask me. And education is key here to getting rid of homophobia. Uh, we need to get people to understand from a very young age that sexuality is on a spectrum. You know, there are certain people at either end of the extreme end of the social uh, sexual spectrum who are completely uninterested in sex at all, right? They're just basically asexual beings. Then you get about 10% of people who are completely heterosexual, only fancy the opposite gender, and never fancy their own sex. Then there's 10% of people, plus or minus, who are completely gay, who only fancy their own sex, who could not be aroused by anything other than their own sex. Then you get the 75 to 80% of people in the middle who, whilst having a preference for one sex over the other, may still find arousal from the other side. You know, there are plenty of straight people who will be aroused, sexually aroused, if they see gay porn, for example. And I'm sure there's uh, people who are gay who get aroused seeing uh, straight couples making out or whatever. Um, and then there's people who are pure bisexual as well. And by pure bisexual, I mean people who literally don't care whether someone is male or female. Um, they're attracted to the person based on their character, personality, and so forth. And the sex of the person comes second to the level of attraction to their personality. I got a lot of respect for that kind of an attitude. I think it's very mature. And I think it proves that uh, sexuality is not as straightforward as I only do this and I never do that. There's plenty of in-between. So we need to educate people that the in-between is, is the norm and that sexual preferences doesn't necessarily equal completely straight or completely gay. Um, there's a lot more nuance to it. So how do we get this education en masse? Well, this is a huge issue because a lot of people, especially the religious homophobes, will resist uh, any kind of institutionalized education along these lines. Indeed, they uh, resist any inclusion of homosexuality uh, in sort of books in school or anything like that. They are completely against normalizing it. So in the same way that making slavery uh, legal or sorry illegal didn't get rid of racism, making same-sex marriage legal in our society nationally is not going to get rid of homophobia in and of itself. But it will be a huge step toward that goal because it'll take a couple of decades before people really accept the legitimacy of these marriages as equal to heterosexual marriages. Well, that all by itself will take a couple of decades. And also in that same period of time, it will take a couple of decades for people to realize that all the social ills that were predicted by these uh, extremist uh, reactionaries uh, are not going to come to fruition. Their fears about same-sex marriage and how it's going to uh, devalue heterosexual marriage, it's, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to affect anybody's marriages. It's not going to affect society in any adverse way. And they need to be able to see it. They need to be able to see it over an extended period of time so they haven't got any, any, anything to fall back on. And suggest, successive generations need to see it as well. Because it's my opinion that uh, as regards religious homophobia, 
um, it's going to take many generations because these people are indoctrinating their children at home. So no matter what you do institutionally in the educational system, no matter what you do uh, in society in terms of uh, media portrayals and positive stereotypes and uh, public figures, you know, sports figures, politicians, uh, you know, celebrities in general who come out and are seen as perfectly normal people, it's going to take a long time, a lot of that kind of exposure before we're even halfway there. This is why I think it'll take a couple of generations because unfortunately the uh, religious tendency towards homophobia um, is going to be the hardest hurdle to cross because you're talking about getting people to question their own deeply held beliefs um, which for those people underpin so much of the way they look at the world. Um, so yeah, I reckon if we could get rid of 95 to 97 percent of homophobia we could conceivably declare victory in the situation uh, even though it hasn't been completely eradicated. I think total eradication is unrealistic but majority eradication I think is well within the bounds of possibility as long as we recognize that it is an uphill battle and we are still very near the bottom of that hill. Thank you for watching this video. I look forward to whatever you have to say in the comments section. And uh, until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.